Well, everybody, thank you for joining us for today's public webinar. As you all know, uh, we have a live, well, maybe you know or you don't know, but we have our next live market profile primer running from April 10th to 18th. And it is currently on sale for $419 now through this Sunday, March 17th. Hello, Jim. Hello. Okay. okay. So you, the, the starting point is the, is the primer and then the e-course and then the intensive. We are currently in an intensive. And what I'm going to share with you this morning to give you an idea of how we look at the markets is what we have talked about this week in the intensive and what we talked about today. When we came in to start the week, I had said that there was a chance, it was the best chance we've seen in some time for a correction to get underway. And the real reason for that was there was no real excess on the lows. So the market came down, took out that, took out that low that was so questionable, and then, um, here, here it is right here, came down and took out that questionable low, and then you got an excess, and then that started the market in the other direction. So we got to follow through on Monday. When the market closed on Friday, it looked to me like we had a good chance to start a correction. It looked like the break from Friday was not over. The market then went down to the next reference, cleaned out that reference, which had no excess on it, left single prints, and then the market started in the other direction. And it's exactly what should happen. I mean, it could have gone either way, but we're always talking about monitoring for continuation, and monitoring for continuation was taking out that reference. Then it took that reference out, but it got rejected. That then turns the market to the buy side. So the market yesterday, you got a screaming market to the upside yesterday. But now what I want to do is share with you, just to give you a feeling of how we look at the uh, how we look at the markets. And what I'm going to share with you right now is exactly what we uh, told the people in the intensive this morning. The first observation that I made, because yesterday looked so strong, but the first observation I made was overnight, the market only went slightly, and I'm in, this is the June contract, I'm in two ticks. I like two ticks better, but it barely took out the overnight high, okay? That was an indication that the market likely wasn't as strong as price made it look yesterday. Then we set up the references. The references would be yesterday's high, the settle, but then this is the reference that mystified a lot of people. And this is the afternoon pullback low. I had the afternoon pullback low at 52.58. And that brought a lot of questions. People said, well, well I, I don't understand. Well, the thinking behind that is, if you're gonna be a successful trader, what you have to understand is the importance of change. Without change, there is no real opportunity in the market. So late yesterday afternoon, here's the J period high. Late yesterday afternoon, the K period comes almost down to the J period high. And then of course, takes it back up into the close. So this was the last, this is where the buyers came in late yesterday. If you stay above this level, there's no real change in the market. If there's any real significant change, I mean, you're always gonna get some fluctuation, but if there's any real significant change, you will get accepted down below the JK period low. If you look at the pullback this morning, the, after, the pullback this morning was just a couple ticks short of this reference. The reference was extremely important. The other thing, as we were watching this go down, was the tempo was exceptionally slow. Tempo is not something that you can't, I can't teach tempo. You have to see it firsthand to learn it. 
So it becomes yours. And the tempo this morning was excruciatingly slow. And the message was slow tempo. The message was slow tempo is there are no sellers. There's no, there was some liquidation, but no real good additional sellers coming into this market. So this reference hell. So now where are we? We've got, um, you know, a couple hours into the market, we've got a very narrow base inside. So the market has come into very short term balance. Markets don't trade, don't stay in balance for a long period of time. It is now just a little bit after 11 in New York. The, if you look at the fixed income market, the fixed income market yields are up, yields are up and the price of the instruments are down. Yesterday, they had a, ten, a week 10 year auction. That week 10 year auction created a downward sharp spike in the market. And that took it down to, uh, you know, this is down here, this GH low. This was just a knee jerk reaction to a week 10 year auction. Now we had this once before. The next day, today we've got the um, 30 year and the 30 year auction is, is announced, I believe it's at one o'clock Eastern. Now, last time you had a bad 10 year, the 30 year auction was fine, more than likely because the market had adjusted to the fact that there was some softness. I don't know if it will do that again, but I think you wanna be aware that the auction results will be just shortly after one o'clock this morning or this afternoon. So you want to be you want to be aware that that could trigger something in the market. I'm not saying it will, but it's awareness and it's a, a point in time at which you want to be probably either hedged or out of the market or you know not a nice stop so you're not subject to that potential volatility. Now what are we looking at today? We have an inside, we have an inside day. And some of the things we reflect on. Remember, I reflected on the fact that if the market would have had a little more strength, we probably could have gotten more above yesterday's high. Secondly, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ sold off um, fairly sharply today. You got no reaction, no meaningful reaction. Part of this little, you know, slowness down to the afternoon pullback low. Was, you know, following suit from the NASDAQ, but the NASDAQ is still down below half back in there from yesterday. So you have, this is unusual. You haven't been seeing this. You've seen a lot of times sympathy moves between the two. Today is quite different. So that's something that you should take notice of. So this morning when the NASDAQ was going down and the ES wasn't following suit. I mean, it, you're getting a little drift, but it wasn't really showing that same aggressiveness. That is market generated information you should take in. The fact that you came right to this reference this afternoon, and, and some people didn't understand why this reference. And this reference is because this is where, if you got below this, you would have change. Market's about change. You didn't get any change relative to late yesterday afternoon. So it keeps this market in this range. Okay, so right now, that's all we've got. We've got a very narrow inside inside day and uh, the, trend, the trend is up. We have an excess high. It's a difficult area in here. And of course, then you've got another inflation number coming tomorrow. So it's not uncommon when you've got an important number coming. I think tomorrow is pretty, pretty important since um, yesterday's uh, PPI or CPI, yesterday's uh, CPI was a little bit harsher than expected. Uh, they may be looking pretty closely at tomorrow. So the market, it's not uncommon to be kind of quiet today. All right, let's open this up for questions. Uh, somebody's asking, isn't tempo just another word for chop? No, it is not. No, chop, chop is back and forth. Tempo is certainly not another word for uh, for chop. Absolutely, positively, no. Okay, what else? Tempo, tempo is it's the market attempting to do to move directionally, and the and the speed or tempo is very slow. Okay, what else? Okay, that reference is so near the POC. Doesn't it? Doesn't that make it a high probability for the market to bounce from there? 
No, I didn't consider it uh, relative to the POC because it was it was a day. It was kind of like a trend day, and you don't really. Uh, I know it doesn't. It's not officially a trend day, but if you look at the overall action, and we don't use POCs on trend days. Okay, is the afternoon pullback low important because the level is so visual? I thought afternoon pullback lows only applied to trend days. Well, what did I just what did I just get done saying about yesterday? I said, well, it's not officially a trend day. Because, you know, you got some pullback there in G and H period, but to me, it looks very much like a trend day, and so that's uh, that's why I use it. It doesn't have to be a trend day, but it's a big up a big day to the upside. Don't you know? Don't make a, too many times. Traders make uh, try and make science out of the market and exactness, um, and you just got to be very careful with that. Okay, what else? Did you consider that the NICE was making all-time highs as you were reading the market this morning? No, I didn't. I was looking. Okay. I was what I was focusing on this morning. I was I was focusing on the uh, what really caught my attention was that there was no real downward move with the ES relative to the NASDAQ and they have, and that's a little different than we've been seeing. So that told me there was probably a little more strength in the ES than normally one would expect it. Because the NASDAQ got, you know, got down below uh, below half back and it could have done a lot more damage um, to the ES and it did. So that told me there was some strength in the ES. Okay, what else? Okay. Uh, do you think that rollover weeks make it harder to trade? I don't. Um, you know, some people might. I, do, I just look at market. I just look at market generated information. Now, you, you got to be careful because you know you can get some volatility late today and early tomorrow. Remember, this is a strange expiration uh, because we you know, things go off the board tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, so you could get some volatility around, you know, late this afternoon and early tomorrow morning. But no, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Uh, why do you prefer to use the front month contract for your charts instead of a continuous contract? Personal choice. Okay. I guess uh, that's what I do. I can just read it. I can read it, and it's a personal choice. Okay. Just as keeping it in two tick increments is a personal choice. Okay. Uh, why wouldn't you say the G period is the pullback reference? The G period low, GH. Remember, trading is an art, not a science. This is what I saw. This was this was a knee-jerk reaction relative to the 10-year. This was I saw in the afternoon. And uh, again, as you can see, that's that was there long before the market went there. This we had this in there before the market opened. It was in the report I did last night. And you can see how well that that worked. Okay, I mean it's just what I really what's really going through my mind is the market tried to you know to sell off in K period. Okay, couldn't do it, and that came, came right down the J period low, and the market goes goes back uh, up. Jim. Yeah. You Hello? kind of went in and out there on your audio. Oh, okay. I don't, yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can, but uh, okay. just a moment ago. Okay, I have no idea period. what happened. So anyhow, K period came down here, and I just took this as the last leg up in the afternoon. And if there was to be change today, it would be below this level. It's again, I come back and say trading is an art, not a science. Okay, what else? Okay. Um, if this wasn't an official trade day, then how would Jim define a trade day? I don't understand that question at all. I don't. I don't know what. You have to help me understand the question. Yeah, come back and clarify if you don't mind, and we can revisit that. Oh, they. Somebody was saying they mean trend day. Oh, okay. Trend yeah, day. I mean, a trend day could be more exacting, but I. You know, again, if you just look at the market, I mean, where'd the market go all day long? Is it officially a trend day? Because at one time framed all but one time? No, but just look at it. This was an aberration because this was following the, the auction and it went back to where it was. So too many times people are looking for exactness. And as I say, exactness kills. You get bigger, trading is an art, not a science. And rather than trying to you know make it fit you know nice 
exacting uh, levels, get a broader understanding uh, to the market. Okay, before we, we go, go on, let me just talk about what I wanted to show you was some of the things we talked about in the intensive today. And, you know, we talked about this low and the reason we talked about the fact that the market, you know, didn't uh, have much above the overnight or yesterday's high. Those are nuances. The real difference, I think, in trading is understanding nuances. But before you can understand nuances, you have to have a basic foundation. And one of the places we start is with the primer. And a lot of times, you know, it's it's not terribly expensive. It's, you know, about a third <coughs> of the cost of our other um, programs. It's an eight day course. The first four days are linear. The last four days we interface with the market and do a market report every night. Um, but it really starts to give you a foundation. In your early stages of anything you learn, you learn, you learn the mechanics. It's not until you get more advanced and you get more training that you start to understand the nuances. The other thing that is so important is as you get more and more learning, you start, you start to understand how your subconscious works. Your subconscious is very powerful. And because of the fast moves in the market, you know, your subconscious is, is uh, very important for traders that are going to be successful. That doesn't, that's a later stage. You, you have to have the basics first before the subconscious can take over. But if you read any of the real pros, for example, Gary Kasparov, How Life Imitates Chess. You know, chess, you're, you're hearing talk about the importance of, of intuition. And those are the things we work on. We work on chunking. Chunking is to scare some people, but it's really how we start to take in lots of information and make it a single piece. But the starting point is with the primer. If you're interested to know what we do and start on a on a different educational course, join us for the join us for the primer. Uh, Jen, you want to add anything to that before I take more market questions? Uh, I was just going to say it runs from uh, April 10th to the 18th. You can go to our website, jimdeltontrading.com, and go to courses at the top navigation. You'll see the course featured up at the top there. There's also a tentative schedule that you can go and download. Um, all times are posted in Eastern, so you need may need to convert for your time zone. And all of the webinars are recorded um, in case you're not able to attend it live or you've got a day job or you live in a time zone where, you know, it'd be nice to sleep sometimes. Uh, that sort of thing, and uh, participants of the primer will have access to materials for three months after it finishes so that you can go back and review as much as you like, okay? A few more market questions. Okay. Uh, can the sell side $2 billion from yesterday, could that be influencing today's balance down? I'm sorry, can the what? The sell side of two billion from yesterday could that be influencing today's balance down? I don't know what you mean by the sell side from two billion yesterday. I, I don't I don't understand what you're saying. Market on close. Market on close? No, I don't think so. I mean, I've I used to look at market on close. I don't anymore um, in the market. I mean, you know, that's by the time you see that announcement, that may already be over. But I think the most in, no, and it's really, and if you think about it, I mean, the question you say influence down, but if you look at it, really the market, the market's an inside, it's an inside day. You're, you're down sharply on the NASDAQ, but the ES isn't. So, I mean, it's, it's a, it's working on its own today. So there's no, you've got some liquidation in here, but you didn't get a combination of liquidation and new money selling. It's just a very narrow day. So rem don't forget, you've got the, um, You've got the 30-year auction coming up, and then, of course, we've got some more inflationary numbers tomorrow. Okay, what else? Okay, uh, somebody here who has done a primer before and is in the current intensive, they just mentioned that um, folks should really consider the primer because um, during the primer, you also have uh, class discussions with Jim. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you for the input. Um, Okay, some other questions here. Do you think that there's meaningful excess on the all-time high from March 8th? 
Yes. yes. I mean, it can be taken out. You know, uh, you got some single prints and then it was very thin coming down. You got some liquidation. Um, you know, is it the best excess I've ever seen? No, but there is excess up there. What else? Okay. Does Jim agree that Friday and Monday, if you make that a composite, it's a B-shaped liquidation? Does he see potential no. P-shape for today? No, no, I don't. I don't. Okay. Are you seeing initiative big money buying, or to me it seems like reactive buyers and then buyers really step in when they sense there are shorts to be squeezed? No, I, I don't use initiating and, and uh, um, responsive buying anymore. Um, and I, I think that, uh, you know, I mean, I think you got a lot of short, you don't have any selling. I think you got a lot of short term momentum traders still on the long side of the market. but. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't see any selling, but I don't see any, you know, real large uh, new money buying or institutional buying. Okay. Okay. Does yesterday's rally confirm that Friday was a liquidation break and we still have a mechanical market? No, I think the real, the real thing was we, we had, we had no excess down there from last, last week. We had two back to back days with no excess on the loan. The selling in the market got too long. So you got the liquidation on Friday, and then you went down, you know, to start the week, you went down and cleaned up that non-excess low. It looked below it, left below it, it left single prints, which told you, okay, there the market really had some strength there. But it was a question mark until it, it took out that uh, non-excess low and then left you the single prints that gave you a different message it said there was no continuing there was some liquidation but there was no continuation selling no continuation selling the uh, the trend remains in intact and then the market started to the upside so where are we right now you know we're still at, we're we're still in a multi-day balance we do we do have an excess high i don't know if it lasts or not uh, up there um and you know the market uh, sellers not have have not arrived Short-term traders are still buying all all breaks, uh, but I'm not seeing I'm not seeing really good new buying coming in here. Seeing you know, logic goes a lot of people know trade trade with the trend. If you want to lose a lot of money, trade against the trend. Okay. Final couple questions. Okay. Uh, yesterday's ten-year auction was described as weak. Usually, in recent months, this would have had an effect on the market. And yesterday was a very muted response. Did Jim see any market generated information there? Oh yeah, it, you know you got the you got the knee jerk reaction to the results, but there was no uh, you know no follow through. All you got was some short term liquidation. You scared some weak hands out of the market, and they were replaced with stronger stronger hands. There was no downside follow through. Um, you know, as just as you know, remember. Um, CPI came in hotter expected. The market didn't care. Took the market higher. Uh, you know the bonds. The bonds went down. The yields went up. Bonds went down, but equities haven't. So I think you're in the very late stages of the equity market. I think there's a lot of laggard buyers in here. But there's a difference between uh, a short. I think there's a shortage of longer-term buyers. I think the. Um, I think there's a pretty heavy. Uh, cadre of buyers from the from the shorter from the shorter term uh, traders, but all in all, the market's in a you know we're in a in a four day balance here, you know starting with the um, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, today, um, and the, the big thing is what hurts us as traders we get we get opinionated, um, and you know and those are the biases. Most of us most of us suffer the most when we have biases in the market. I'm just sitting there saying. We've got a we've got a four day balance in here. Today's a very narrow inside day. Um, if it stays narrow, what are the general rules? Go with a break. Go with a breakout from the inside day. Then monitor for continuation. And I I don't when I when I get in trouble and I start to make grandiose you know mentally. I mean I may say like coming into the weekend I thought there was a good chance for a correction. It it did. It went down. But then you monitor for continuation, and the monitoring for continuation showed no follow-through. It actually showed just 
just the opposite. That's the secret of short-term trading, being able to be mentally flexible and understand the market and adjust to the market as it adjusts. Okay, final question. Do you want to take a couple? <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, do you still think that other time frame chart participants are still on the sidelines? Well, you know, if I had to make a guess, you know, the longer, the longer, take the longest, the longer term. They've been in this market for a long time, and remember, their turnover isn't that isn't that great. Um, I mean, that they make money time in the market, not timing the market. So. You know, somebody said yesterday they read a report that 52% of, of those were planning to add to the market. Well, you know, that's not a big, that's not a big deal um, in there. I think there's still, uh, I think there's still questions about uh, the economy in there. Um, but I, I, I think right now it feels like there's an awful lot of wait and see. The momentum is still up. So the shorter term traders are going to stay with momentum. I think the longer time frame is pretty well invested. Um, I pick up some sense that some of the hedge funds are a little bit weighted towards the uh, towards the short side, and of course, last year they got squeezed. But right now, to keep it simple, the market is in a in a four day balance. It's a very narrow range today. Um, if this stays all day, go with the breakout and then monitor for continuation. Trying to make grandiose calls of where the market's going has done a lot of people in. Okay, what else? Okay, uh, would Jim consider this an exuberant market? Um, you know, that's, that's irrelevant to me. It's just, I'm a short-term trader. I'm a short-term trader, and I'm looking at what's going on on the short time frame. You want to lose a lot of money? Do short-term trading, but then you know start focusing in, in the longer term. And is it over exuberant? Is it too short, too long? And you'll lose a lot of money. Short-term, I mean, my my market is short-term trading, and that's where I focus. And it, the key to short-term trading is to keep the other biases aside. Too many people, you know, do their short-term trading, hugging these or carrying around biases, either long-term or short-term, and they may not be relevant for short-term trading. Okay. Okay. Uh, if we take out the all-time high from the eighth, there's nothing else on the upside. So, did will it? They said, did it or will it go to the downside by default? I have no idea what that means. I have no idea whatsoever. Right now, right now we're in a we're in a four-day balance. Okay. Final question. Okay. Um. How would institutional buying look on 30-minute charts or the profile? That's, a, that's another get yourself in a lot of trouble question. Um, I, I tell the story years ago. I worked with it many years ago on uh, in Chicago. I mean, 50 years ago. Uh, one of my friends made $5 million. Um, everybody thought he was a local on the floor, and he made $5 million uh, executing um, brokerage for one of the big hedge funds. So, you know, very few people knew it was happening. But the, the dream of what it's going to look like on the profile, it's not there. They've got so many different ways. Back then, they had a way to hide their business. And what I always say, if the hedge funds or the big money wants you to see their business, you don't want to know it. You know, then they're trying to suck you into something. So don't, don't waste your time on that. Look at the profile. Look at the, look at the trend. Look at the profile, look at value, look at volume, look at attempted direction. And you know, that's going to tell you more than anything, more than anything else. Okay. Let me say, uh, unless you got a final question, I'll say thank you very much. And uh, um, those that really, you know, want a deeper understanding of what we do, um, start start with the primer, which is coming up here on the uh, on the 10th of April. Anything final there, Jim? I was just going to mention that technically the ideal order of our courses is the live market profile primer, then the foundation and application of the market profile e-course, then an intensive, then the advanced nuances e-course. Um, but obviously the live market profile primer is a course that is live and only offered two to three times a year. 
Um, and so if we don't have a live market profile primer, then a lot of folks that find us at that time or decide to do a course with us, it would be the foundation e-course. But I will say that most people that do a foundation e-course with us or start off with that end up taking a live market profile primer with us just as an extra iteration and to have that live environment, make sure that they're understanding those concepts um, in a live environment. So just wanted to mention that um, the foundation e-course is the, is the main course you want to take. Um, if you want to be able to join us uh, for a live intensive in the future, it is a prerequisite requirement to have that foundation e-course uh, to qualify and join us for a live intensive, okay? The primer gives, and, you, gives you an inexpensive way to get a feel for what we do over eight days, all right? Unless right. there's a question, and, I'll say thank you. I think we're good. I think all right. we're good. Thank you all thank very you much. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great one. See you next time.